Hey guys, Henning and Morton from Flip Normals here. If you want to follow along with these tutorials, all the project files are available for a free download on the Flip Normals Marketplace. So check out the link in the description. In this video, we are going to take a look at how we can light and render our newly shaded lightsaber using Blender. So there are a few things we uh, we have to enable before we really get started with the, with the fun stuff. We are going to go into uh, the render settings and we're going to enable basically everything here when it comes to <laughs> Eevee. <laughs> everything. We're going to enable ambient inclusion, which you can just see it just, it just makes everything just look a bit better. It basically what's happening is that stuff which is close together is darker, so it feels more grounded. I can make it look a bit dirtier as well, but most of the time it just makes everything just feel a bit more connected and enhances the details. Then we have bloom, which uh, makes stuff glow. This is if you have if you have areas which are really bright, they're just really gonna be blown out, and they're gonna have this nice, very soft glow. Then we have screen uh, space reflections. This is gonna just make your reflections a lot nicer. And then we have shadows. We have shadows enabled by default, but we're just gonna increase uh, the um, the resolution of them a little bit. We're gonna set this to something like uh, 2K, depending on your system. Maybe this is too heavy. Yeah. But uh, we're running a pretty beefy card here, so we can we can do this. We're also going to enable soft shadows as well, which you guessed correctly is going to make the shadows soft. And right now you've only seen some of the changes. One thing that's especially, you know, important for this piece is the bloom. The bloom doesn't show up in the look the viewport by default, which is what we have active currently. But as soon as we change this to the shading viewport, um, this will, uh, it'll start, it'll start to render in the viewport. So what we need to do now, now we need to go into our camera view, which we already set up in the last chapter. So you can hit the numpad zero for this, and then we can change the resolution. Since this here is a vertical image, it doesn't make any sense to have it set to, uh, to this landscape view. We can also just zoom in a little bit, just so we, we framing it just a little bit better. So let's change the resolution, and we do this under the output. You see this little printer? This is how big the printer is gonna print our image. <laughs> this is how I think about it. Okay, so we can just uh, set this to uh, a resolution which uh, which nicely frames the image. You don't want it to be too too uh, vertical because then you can't post it to Instagram. Which <laughs> That's is the most important thing there is. <laughs> <laughs> so now we have it nicely framed here. Uh, now you can definitely increase the resolution here, but uh, for now this is this is good enough for us. Then we need to make. Uh, a background plane as well. You see this a lot. We have this like light box set up or this like a ground plane with a gradient. So we're going to do that as well. We're going to make a plane and we're just going to extrude it and bevel it up. So right now you can see that our uh, 3D cursor is still up here where we left it for lightsaber. So we are going to hit shift S and hit cursor to world origin. Now it pops it down there. Then we're going to make a new plane. Just shift A and then we do mesh and then we do plane. There we go. Now you can see it's very bright. Scale her up. Let's scale her up quite a lot. Uh, something like this. And then we're going to take the edges here, or just the, the end edge, and just extrude this up. So hit the E key, and then we hit the Z key, and then it's just going to move up on the Z axis. And then we're going to take this edge, and we're just going to bevel it a few times. This is simply going to make it a lot smoother. So hit Control B for bevel. And then we can just use the, um, the scroll wheel on our mouse to increase the subdivision or increase the amount of loops. This is a fairly standard uh, studio setup that, I mean, it's derived from photography. Any product shots or modeling shots that you'll see will oftentimes have a faded background like this where we have a smooth gradient in the back because it just, it gives you this illusion of like it goes into infinity yeah, and exactly. it's, it's smooth and it looks really nice. Yeah, for any kind of product shot, I tend to do this or any kind of anything. Yeah, really. really. So we are now going to add a subdivision modifier to this as well. Hit Control 2, and then we're going to hit Smooth Shade as well, or Shade Smooth. So now it's going to be really nice and smooth. And now if you're looking for this super nice Jesus image of lightsaber, you are <laughs> pretty much done. We are going to add a shader to the background as well. And we do this the exact same way as we did in the last chapter. We enable, we go to the shaders, then we hit a new material. And now we can make this nice and dark. Now you can see it changes drastically the actual look of it. We also want to make this metallic, just so it looks really nice and cool. 
Okay, so now we have a shader for that, and we are still using the looked at viewport, which up until this point has been perfectly fine. We now need to just go into the actual rendered viewport, and now you can see what this actually looks like. You know, now we have uh, we have this nice smooth background, and we have. Uh, we have shaders and everything, and we have this nice glowing material. One of the main differences here between the previous viewport and the shading viewport is that it no longer displays the HDRI that we had in the background. Now we're purely relying on the lights that are in the scene to create reflections and to create the lighting. So one of the first thing we're going to do, we're going to create, make this red lightsaber a lot more red. <laughs> <laughs> right now we have, we have it set to a value of, uh, of just one, which it means it's super red, but it's not actually that glowing, which means now when we have, um, we have bloom enabled, we need to really just crank this up. So if we go to color, and now you can see we have a value here. When I started with CG, I assumed that was the max, <laughs> yeah. but this is really just any value. You can just, this can be whatever. So we're gonna set this to four, and now you can see wow. how, whoa, super pimp. So now we have a really nice, really nice uh, bright lightsaber. We want this to really be the brightest image or brightest thing in the image so that the bloom picks it properly up. Then we're gonna set the strength to three as well, just so it becomes really light savory. <laughs> the, nice cool, the nice thing about this, so this is specifically for EV because it's a real-time uh, render engine with the bloom. It's a post-process that you put on top. Um, with the color, you know, changing the, the, the value of the color to be greater than one, which seems unrealistic, uh, we get this really nice and bright uh, bloom effect. With the strength, we then enhance the core of it so that why it, then it becomes, you know, it almost looks like it's white on the inside, but we have this nice red fall off. Yeah, it becomes really nice and glowy now, which is exactly what we want. We can go under the bloom settings as well, and now we can just change this a little bit just to see what happens. If you want to this to be real nice and, and glowy, you can do that. Or if you want this to be like a, uh, a slightly more contained glow, you can do that as well. Uh, I, I prefer a bit of mix in this. Something like this is, something like this is quite cool. Very glowy. Very <laughs> dangerous. <laughs> So now we can actually start to light this as well. Within Blender, we have um, a default light, and this is a point light, which um, simply just means that it's like, um, it's like a light bulb you have, where, which emits light into all directions. This is kind of a terrible light when it comes to 3D, because you don't really want to light stuff with light bulbs. Like imagine if you were on a, on a studio set and you're lighting like a, a lightsaber for a commercial or something, you don't, you're not using like, you not you wouldn't use like light bulbs. You would be using nice area lights. Luckily, we have area lights directly in in Blender. The the advantage of using an area light over a point light is that a point light acts like a tiny sun. So it's like it 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 spreads especially when it's close to an object. It'll spread out the shadows quite a lot. Whereas an area light, the bigger an area light is, the more focused, the sharper the edges will be of of the shadows. And it just gives you more directionality to your light, but also for reflections. Now you'll have like a square that can reflect, the, the metal can reflect off of. So your entire environment is just going to look a lot nicer. Yeah, in short, use area lights for most things yeah. for lighting. Unless you're lighting the sun, then hit the sun one. But <laughs> the majority of your stuff, your lighting is going to be area lights. We can go really close to it. And now you can see we have this nice little square. You can just drag on this to make it bigger. We definitely want to make this a lot bigger. So this is the actual sort of like volume of the light itself. So like this is how big the light is going to gonna look. Now you can see it's not really that visible. The default intensity I found to be really low. So let's just add a few zeros to it. And now you can see it becomes a lot brighter. <laughs> now we can just take it down a little bit as well. We can make maybe make this like uh, 5K. And this is something you are going to be doing a lot of where you are just going to be changing intensity and just seeing what works. That's again one of the cool things about using Eevee. It's it's a fully real-time render engine like this, and it just looks really cool right away in the viewport. The nice thing is you you know you're not restrained from like the way where the light was created. You can combine the intensity of the light with the distance from the object, and that's going to give you a better fall off. And maybe if it's if it's closer to the object, it's going to be a lot more uh, bright and a lot tighter for the shadows. We can also duplicate it again, Shift D, and this duplicates it. And here is a really nice hotkey, which is Shift T. Shift key, a T is going to just point the light towards wherever you are, you're clicking at or moving your cursor over. So there's no reason to awkwardly go in and uh, and just like start to rotate it or whatever. Though you can do that as well. And if you do that, I really recommend that you use this gizmo because now I just feel I have a lot more control with it. 
Uh, gesture-based stuff is awesome, but if I'm doing lighting, I really prefer to have the extra control of this. To, to make it even easier when you enable the rotation gizmo, you can set it to be local instead of uh, global space. That way the gizmo will then follow the local rotation that we've applied to the light. Yeah, it's very nice. The cool thing as well about lights is that we can add color to them. So here we can uh, go back to this first light and we can make this uh, a little bit blue. This just... Um, this color just looks really nice when it comes to to lights. You really don't want to have a lot of uh, like white lights. This just looks incredibly artificial and yeah. just sterile. And then we have this light here, and we can make this nice and red, which of course would be the symbolic of the dark side. <laughs> <laughs> now we're going into the poetry between <laughs> yeah, exactly. between the blue side. But that, that's that's a general lighting practice when it comes to lighting theory. It's like opposing colors like this, where you have um a blue colder color and a more orangey warmer color uh, obviously like when you push it to the extremes it's just going to look like a, i don't know a 70s uh, porn store or something something creepy uh but like with this you know it's like you can always adjust the intensity of it and just how much color is in there but the complementary lights really will work, work well together Again, cool thing is that everything is real time, so we can just go in. I just want to make this a little bit darker, just a bit more focus on the actual object here. And we can also go in and uh, we can change the angle of this as well. So if you want to, or and, and how close it is to the camera. So if you want to make this just go a bit closer, maybe we can control the reflections a bit more. We can, we can totally mm. do that as well. Uh, but this is something you can just keep on tweaking indefinitely. Like you, you're never really... No <laughs> lighting. This is something you're just gonna keep on working with forever. And sometimes you'll add like a tiny light here to just add that perfect reflection in the corner. So it's always good, like with anything else, whether you're modeling or you're texturing, shading, whatever it is, start simple. Start with as few lights as possible, and then you can start adding on top. We can also change the shaders as well, like we we briefly talked about. If you want to make this a bit sharper, you can you can totally do that. Or if you want to make this a bit broader as well, you want to make it more diffuse. This is totally up to you. Uh, I usually have a general shader setup for my, which is done in a more neutral environment. And then once you uh, get into uh, like into proper lighting, you might have to do some adjustments to it because you're not really seeing what's going on until you are fully into a light environment. Now we are at this point, we are using Eevee, which is an awesome render engine. This is a real time render engine, which just means that it's essentially a game engine. Everything which is happening here is real time, which means it's doing a lot of cheats. An an another kind of render engine might really shoot race and do physically accurate co uh, computations. Well, this here is doing a lot of guesswork and a lot of approximations. It looks really good, but it's in order to be fast, it's doing a lot of uh, it's doing a lot of cheats. Yes, yeah, so you can't have like a proper ray traced engine be as fast as a real-time render engine not until we get like a lot of these rtx cards which are now supporting real-time rendering but that's still probably still like a few years away yeah and a few thousand dollars away <laughs> as well <laughs> yeah at least so we have uh, we have another render engine here called cycles cycles is awesome and as you can see right away it's a lot slower um, but this the slowness also makes it a lot more accurate. It's not a worse render engine just because it's slower. It means it's just significantly more accurate. Uh, you can also see again the difference between these two is, you know, there are just differences. For instance, Cycles doesn't support Bloom, you know, all this nice glowy stuff, which is the main reason we're using this now. Well, one of the reasons. Because we, in order to get this, this glowy stuff in Cycles, we would have to take it into something like Photoshop or the compositor within Blender itself and really just do this. The point is it would have to be a post effect and you couldn't do it directly in the viewport. So again, if we just were to switch to cycles and um, this is an incredibly easy engine to use. We really aren't going to go too in depth into this, but um, it just looks really good out of the box. But since we lit this to work with, uh, with Eevee, you might just have to do some changes to this. So let's just do a quick render off this. You can do this by going under render and hit render image, or you can hit the F12 key. That's what I prefer to use. And there we go, because again, real time render engine, it just, it's done in like 1.8 seconds. But then if we were to change this, if we go to slot two, now we can, it's gonna render into a different slot and change this to cycles. This is just so it's easy for us to compare the renders. Uh, we're basically just storing uh, different versions of the image now. 
And then we can go back and forth and compare which one is better in which way, and maybe we'll go for one render engine over the other. So if we hit, were to hit the J key now, we can go between these two. Now, the main difference here is, well, obviously one looks a lot more pimp because it has, <laughs> it has all this glowing stuff, but technically the reflections are a lot better in, in cycles because it's, they're way more technically correct. They're more mathematically correct. So if you want really high quality images, we recommend that you use cycles. But if you want something more real time or if you want something, something which is just really fast, maybe you're doing previous or you just want your, to have stuff right away, then we recommend that you stick to Eevee. Yeah, and I, th I think that just about covers everything for this intro series. You know, it's a, it's a lot of material to cover. It's a lot of different topics to go through, but we're pretty confident that you should now be able to do model most things, apply materials and render things, everything you need to do in, in Blender 2.8. Yeah, the difference between this, this product here and where we, which we just made and something more complicated would really just be that they have different shapes. There might be more pieces to this. Uh, they, might, they might be using more shaders, uh, different, different kind of lights, but the main building blocks are really there. You should be able to look at anything on your desk right now and start to model this, which is also what we highly recommend that you do. Just start to model as much as possible, light as much as you can. Yeah. Uh, of course, you should always watch uh, more Flip Nolan tutorials, <laughs> but I, I personally really recommend that you, you just do a lot of projects and don't rely too much on tutorials, apart from Flip Nolan tutorials, <laughs> but just get started with. Even on ours, don't rely too much on Don't them. rely too much on them. No, it's like it's easy to get trapped in that whole thing of keep watching tutorials and not producing actual content. Um, because maybe you're afraid to get started or you're not quite sure how to do something. I find the best approach for me, I have a totally personal preference, but what works best for me is just I have something in mind that I want to make. I try to make it and when I fail at a certain point, I Google my way out of that. How do I do the next thing and the next thing? Because that way you keep producing and you just keep improving really fast. We also have a lot of training on our YouTube channel. Like a lot of this is for other software like uh, for Maya, for ZBrush, but the principles are really the same. So if, you if you're seeing a tutorial on our channel, which uh, looks interesting, but we're not using Blender, just check it out anyway, because the principles usually will translate. Everything we've been doing now in this series would, could easily be translated to, for instance, Maya or Cinema yeah. 4D or whatever. 3D is kind of 3D. So once you reach that point, then you can really, you c you can really do anything. So yeah, with all that said, we really hope you enjoyed this five-part tutorial series. It's been a lot of fun to make, and it's always awesome just to make lightsabers <laughs> all yeah. day long. Uh, feel free to post your lightsaber on the Flipping Worlds forums, a link in the description, and we would really love to see what you're creating. Yeah, and we'll, we'll, definitely create the, we'll definitely continue this and create more introduction series for other parts of Blender as well. Uh, we're also looking into sculpting. There's going to be a lot of developments coming for, for specifically sculpting in the near future for Blender. Uh, but there's so much Blender can do. And, you know, we're never going to run out of material for, for stuff to produce for, for this software. So let us know what you're interested in seeing. And um, we'll do our best to create some awesome content for you guys. So if you want to follow along with this chapter that you've just watched, uh, make sure to head over to the Flip Nomos Marketplace. There's a link in the description where you can pick up the free project files for this lightsaber project. So we have project files for each chapter. So you can, you can kind of follow along to see, okay, what is the progress from chapter to chapter here?